Setting goals and planning is a very important part of our life's process. How many people have a constant plan for setting, rearranging, evaluating, and strengthening the purpose of their goals? The answer is very few. In fact, if you will do this, you will become among the few who do, the envy of all who watch. In the leadership seminar, we made a whole 10-year plan for setting goals. We covered business goals, personal goals, family goals, economic goals, and financial independence. It's a basic and important thing. If you put effort into setting goals, make a plan for it. Keep checking and changing them, discuss them, and review them often. I believe it will place you in the top 5%. If you want to succeed and make big changes in your life, having a regular plan for setting, changing, checking, and strengthening your goals is fundamental. We need to take a look into the future. We've got to have the future well designed. The future is called the promise, and this is what we teach in our leadership seminar series. The promise of the future can be an awesome force for your own future. There are two ways to face the future. One is with apprehension, and the other is with anticipation. I can tell you in my travels all around the world, most people face the future with apprehension. And the reason is they don't have it well designed. They've sort of left that up to someone else to take care. But here's the best way to face the future. That is with anticipation. Anticipating the future becomes easier when it's clear and well planned. When you're setting goals, first figure out what you want. Sit down and ask yourself questions like, what skills do I want? How much money do I want in the future? Where do I want to go? What places do I want to visit? What habits and skills do I want to develop? Once you've thought about your future desires, make a list. Just write everything down. It's a straightforward process. Spend time with your family, spouse, kids, your business colleagues, and make it one of the major fundamentals in your life. Constantly setting goals, rearranging them, and strengthening the purpose of your goals. That's the number one fundamental for success. Here's number two. Know exactly what you want to do with what you have right now. This is a basic idea, making a plan for what to do and how to handle your current resources. Most people I talk to already have something. The important question is, what are you doing with it? Where are you putting it? First, you need to understand about society and money, how to earn it, where to get it, where it comes from, and the importance of managing it. Teach kids from a young age what to do with a dollar. If a child gets a dollar and spends it right away, they're learning the wrong habits. The plans we learn when we're small often guide us for the rest of our lives. Knowing what to do with your money and where to put it is crucial. It's very important to have a plan for managing your current resources so that by age 65, you don't end up like most people, with nothing. You'll have substance plenty to share and plenty to enjoy, a plan for using all your resources wisely. What I mean is, we all need a steady plan for learning, a regular plan for going to the library, and a regular plan for attending lectures and seminars. Many people get ideas randomly, like when someone visits or when they happen to hear or read something useful. When you listen to a speech, make sure you have a notebook to jot down notes. Wherever you go, gather knowledge, but do it with a purpose. Do it regularly, do it every day, and do it consistently. We should have a regular plan for reading books. Many people either read books randomly or don't read them at all. Sometimes they don't have a good plan for choosing the right books. For instance, someone might read comics instead of classics and miss out on valuable things that could truly help their life because they don't have a plan. Here's something to think about. Good ideas usually don't just come to you out of the blue. You have to go after them. You need to actively look for them. There's a saying in the Bible that goes, if you look, if you search, you will find. So having a steady plan for learning, reading books, going to talks, collecting ideas, and having a place to write them down, like a journal you can review, is a basic thing. If you stick to this plan, it can put you in the top 5%. It's how many people have a consistent plan for the gathering of knowledge. The answer, very few. And what you want to be is just be one of the very few. You need a clear and detailed plan for how you spend your time at work, 
We call it a game plan. Many people just think about what they have to do tomorrow or next week in their head. They don't plan much further. They might think, I have to get up in the morning and go to work, and that's it. But having a game plan is important. A game plan for becoming financially independent. A game plan for your work time. And a game plan for your personal time. Families need a game plan to make sure they don't miss important things that can help their lives and success. Kids, moms, and dads all need a game plan. If you're in business, you need a game plan for your office and for your business. A detailed plan for how you spend your work time is important. In our leadership seminar, we discuss how to make this plan for the day, week, month, and even for six months or a year. From doing business globally, we've learned that plans need to be detailed. Otherwise, you're likely to forget something. I can assure you that having a detailed plan for your work time can put you in the top 5% because most people don't have one. Shove shared with me when I first met him at age 25. He said, Jim, to do better, you've got to get around the right people. If you regularly spend time with people who can improve your life and lifestyle, you'll be amazed at the progress you can make. Surround yourself with people who share common interests in progress, success, ideas, and philosophy. I have a good phrase for you. Never mistake the power of influence. The man says, well, I live here, but it doesn't really bother me. That's not true when someone says, I'm around these people, but they really don't bother me. That's not true either. The people you're around have some influence on your life. What you need to do, and maybe this year is a good time to start, is make plans to be around the right people. Spend time with those who talk about positive ideas and philosophy, not just the latest joke. Surround yourself with people who read, who are successful, and who are always growing and changing. Even if you have to be around some negative influences at work, counterbalance that by being with the right people who can help change your life for the better. Associate with positive people consistently and focus on getting around those who can help you grow financially, personally, spiritually, and socially. If you do that, it will definitely put you in the top 5%. Can you guess how many people have an association of people of common interest in success, progress, ideas, and philosophy? The answer, very few. But be one of the few. Mr. Shoff taught me this one when I first met him at age 25. He called it lifestyle. Learning how to live involves always finding ways to live uniquely and enjoy what you have now. The challenge of lifestyle is learning how to live well. It would be unfortunate if you earned a lot but didn't live well. If someone made a lot of money, but their personality, lifestyle, and uniqueness remain the same. That would be unfortunate. It's pitiful to find a man in a half million dollar home. And sure enough, he's a $5,000 man. Learning the skills of lifestyle, what to do with your money so that you get joy from it. Chof taught me the simplest little things like tipping. He explained the meaning of the word tip to me. I didn't know much about tipping. I'm from a small farm community. He said tip, the word tip, comes from a little phrase called to ensure promptness. The more I thought about it, the more I understood. If a tip is to ensure promptness, when should you give it? The answer, up front. You don't wait to see if you've received good service before deciding to tip. You give it up front to ensure a good service. Mr. Shoff said to me, sophisticated people make sure they get good service. It's just one of the little things to learn called lifestyle. Discovering ways to delight in your family, money, time, and possessions, and finding joy in your thoughts. Learn how to anticipate your family's needs with happiness instead of negativity, and take great delight in the things you already have. Many people think, I'd be happy if I had more money. However, happiness is something you have to cultivate independent of money, because money alone won't bring you happiness. A valuable lesson in life is realizing that you can learn a lot. There's hardly anything you can't learn if you want to. You could pick up several languages and develop numerous skills. It's important to have a schedule and a plan for nurturing these skills. Aim high and don't settle for less than your potential. When you reach the end of your life, you don't want to regret living only a fraction of it and missing out on becoming the person you could be. Developing skills requires discipline, but it's worth the effort. Attend classes, make the most of every opportunity to learn 
whether it's leadership, diplomacy, language, or business skills, plan for the growth of all your personal abilities. Holding on to my previous set of goals has been incredibly beneficial. When I revisit the goals and lists I made 10 or 20 years ago, I smile because some of the things I considered crucial back then are no longer a priority for me. I now have a new list reflecting how I've grown, changed, and matured. My advice to you is to determine what you want, put it in writing, and don't forget to keep your old lists. They can provide valuable insights as you evolve. Next, when you achieve something from your list, mark it as done. There's a joyful satisfaction in checking off items from your list. If you can add a bit of excitement to the process, that's even better. For instance, I had a goal to visit Spain many years ago. When I finally took my first trip to Spain, I brought along the journal with that list. As the plane landed in Madrid, I waited until the wheels touched down and then checked it off, adding a touch of drama. So, enjoying the process of checking items off your list is part of the fun. Now, here's the key point about creating lists and planning for your future. When the future becomes clear, the effort becomes more manageable. It's crucial to remember that behind every promise, there's a corresponding price to pay. Everyone has to meet that commitment, adhere to the deal, and embrace the necessary disciplines. There's a cost for everyone. However, what I found is that if the promise is clear and compelling, the price becomes easier to pay. Goal setting requires genuine effort. It's hard work, and I acknowledge that. This is why many people tend to neglect it. It's demanding. While many work hard in their jobs, they often neglect putting in the effort to shape their future. They let it slide. The task involves making plans, and I understand that not everyone enjoys it. But my advice is don't let that be your approach. The guy says, yeah, you work where I work, but by the time you get home, it's late. You have to take care of yourself, eat, watch some TV, and go to bed. You can't stay up late, plan, plan, and plan. He is a good worker, hardworking and sincere. But you need to be more than just sincere and hardworking. You must also be a good planner. Someone wise once said that people who don't plan are setting themselves up for failure. So it's a good idea to write down your goals in a journal. You can study yourself better. Look at the goals you set three weeks ago or two years ago. Make changes if needed. Rearrange priorities, scratch some off and add new ones. Take note of your accomplishments and what you desire. Writing down your goals shows you're serious about doing better. To improve, you don't have to be overly serious, but you must take it seriously. In the past, I used to have a problem called passive hope. It's bad, but what's worse is happy hope. So be serious about your goals. Put them on paper and consider various goals like business goals, financial goals, family goals, and more. If you don't work on your goals, the time will pass and in five years, you might end up where you don't want to be. Now, is the time to make changes? Your goals affect you in many ways. Your handshake, attitude, personality, how you walk, talk, and even dress. Now, some people have goals, but they have such lousy goals. The effect is bad. For instance, if someone's goal is just to scrape up enough money to pay bills, but it's such a lousy goal, the effect is bad. You don't want to wake up on Monday thinking about paying bills. And some people have so given up on life. They have joined the thank God it's Friday club. How sad. Everybody hopes things will get better. Poor people hope that ought to tell you something. It means the future does not get better by hope. It gets better by plan. I want to share with you a really important phrase. This is really how it gets better. It's how your journey toward exciting adventures and accomplishments can start. When you understand this, the major key to your better future is you. So it does, if you've got fairly decent neighbors, that'll help. If weather's good, that'll help. If there aren't tragedies going on in the community, that'll help. If it isn't too cold, that'll help. If it isn't too hot, that'll help. Okay, there's a lot of things that will help, but they all play a minor role. Here's what really counts. What really counts is you. And Bill Bailey gave me another phrase I have never forgotten. 
things to get better, you've got to get better. For things to change, you've got to change. So the major key to your better future is you. The real magic isn't in the company. The marketing plan, the film, the product, the training, or the incentives. Let me tell you where the magic truly is. It's in you. The magic is in a smile. The magic is in a handshake. The magic is in excitement. The magic is in determination. The magic is in compassion, sharing, caring. The magic is in strong feeling. See, that's what starts to make all the difference. That's what makes a real difference and starts changing everything. Let me share something important with you about making your future better. The man said, I hope things will get better. I'll tell you what, he'll always be poor because see, it isn't going to get better. I used to always hope things would change, right? I kept hoping the next election, things will change, something will change, something will be better. But I found out finally that is not true. It is not going to get better. It isn't going to change. Let me tell you how it's going to be. It's going to be about like it's always been. That's about how it's going to be, about like it's always been. Wet in spring, hot in summer, cold in winter. Sometimes the wind will blow, and sometimes it'll be still. Sometimes it goes well, sometimes it gets in reverse, sometimes it's storm, sometimes it's calm. The tide comes in, the tide goes out. See, it's going to be about like it's always been. But for your future to get better, you've got to change. You've got to grow. You've got to get better. Well, like many others, I used to blame everything around me for my problems. People often told me, Jim Rohn, how come you can't do better for your family? You seem smart. How come you're broke, got no money, can't even pay your bills on time? If you submit your paycheck, you'd be in financial trouble. What's wrong with you? Now, if you'd have heard that as often as I did, you'd have probably done what I did about it. Finally, I came up with this list of reasons why I wasn't doing well. I used to blame the weather. Things like the weather. Several months there, last winter, was really tough. Could you do well in such harsh condition? Next on my list were things like, my parents didn't have much money. What kind of a start is that, right? Nobody handed me any fortune. And I was raised in the wrong part of the country for great economic advantage. I was raised in a small farm town up in Idaho, and I didn't even finish all my formal schooling. I didn't have any degrees. And a long list of negative relatives always putting me down in cynical neighbors. I live around here. You wouldn't believe. They wouldn't go across the street to help anyone. They hardly know who lives next door. They're just selfish, looking out for themselves. Won't loan you money or nothing. That's a pretty good for being broke, isn't it? I thought it was a darn good list. I've been working on it for years. Then I learned something important one day. I found out it's not what happens that determines the quality of a man's life. It's not what happens. You see, what happens happens to everybody. Same thing can happen to two different people. One gets rich, the other stays poor. What makes the difference? The difference is what you do about it. Someone might say, yeah, but you don't understand the disappointments I've had. Come on, everybody faces disappointments. Disappointments are not special gifts reserved for the poor. Everybody's got them. Everybody gets disappointed. The difference is what you do about it. It's not about the weather. I used to blame the weather. Then I realized that even the rich guy with a $100,000 home gets rain and snow in his yard. That's incredible. How could that happen? See, it's not the weather. It's not disappointment. It's not what happens. It's about what you decide to do when things happen. Ever wonder how long it takes to completely turn your life around? Completely around. One day, that's all it takes. One day, and there are three major ingredients in that day that could make it one of the greatest days in your life. Firstly, there's something called disgust, and sometimes that's what it takes to make real changes. Disgust with poverty, disgust with mediocrity, disgust with just dragging along, Disgust with just getting by. Disgust with not being able to pay bills on time. Disgust with being under the guns. Disgust with having to deny yourself and your family things they really need. Finally, there comes a day when you've had enough. Hey, that could be a, a great day when you finally have had it right up to neck. When a man finally has it with nitpicking about poverty, a day finally arrives when he says, that's it, I've had enough. 
I know my wife's been going to the supermarket. And he said, I know she's there looking at two cans of beans. One can for 49 cents, one can for 47 cents. And he said, I know she's going to buy the 47 cent can of beans and she doesn't even like the brand. Do you know why she's going to buy the 47 cent can of beans instead of the 49 cent can of beans? To save two cents. And the man finally says, I'm done with this nitpicking, struggling financially with putting up with the hardships of poverty. So number one, to make it one of the greatest days of turnaround in your life, number one could well be discussed, weary of how it's been. Now here's the second thing, decision. Decide what you're going to do. If you want to do something different, make a decision and go for it. Make a decision. There's nothing that can turn your life around like a strong decision. Sometimes you've got to take a decision, and especially if you want to get on with change, you have to learn to make them quickly. Let me tell you what indecision is. Indecision is one of the greatest seeds of opportunity. Indecision will steal you blind. Indecision will empty your bank account. After a while, indecision can become a disease. And pretty soon, the guy knows he's got the disease. He says, I know I'm on the fence, but he says, what if I get off on the wrong side? Listen, this is the tragedy with sitting on the fence. While you sit on the fence, the clock keeps ticking and see person's life passes by with each tick of the clock. Bill Bailey once said, a man asked the universe for more time and the universe replied, there is no more time. Give me more. The idea is to figure out how to make the most of yourself. Don't live a distracted life like I did for most of my years. Some people just stumble along trying to find money to pay bills without really learning or paying attention. Don't do that. Be interested. I once read an article in Reader's Digest and its title was, Wherever You Are, Be There. Take an interest. Watch with interest. Don't let success pass you by without looking closely at it. Examine it, understand it, and then think about how to use it in your own life. See, a man's life is the most precious thing he really has. Don't do that, make every minute count. Make every hour count. That's why you should learn to make decisions as quickly as possible. See, after a while, just get off the fence. It doesn't matter which side, just get off. A life full of adventure and achievement is a life full of many decisions. Even if some decisions turn out to be wrong, they give you experience to make better ones. So remember, don't see how many decisions you can get out of, see how many you can get into. Learn to speed up the decision-making process. It will add geese to your life. So the first ingredient is discussed. The second ingredient is decision. The third is taking action. In the end, you have to do something. See, this is where personal growth comes in. For things to change, you've got to change. For things to be better, you've got to be better. You've got to grow. You've got to get better. So the first step to personal growth is understanding how things work. Here's step number two to personal growth. Go to work. Doesn't matter how much you find out. The next key is action. Remember on that day of change, number one is disgust. Number two is decision. Number three is action. You've got to go to work. Bill Bailey often advises us to pick three or four things that can improve your attitude, your personality, that can help your economic future. Just find three or four ideas or things and go to work on them. Then he said, find three or four more. Go to work on those like crazy. And Bill Bailey always says, caution, don't wait till you've learned 10,000 things. You know why? You'll use up all the time and you'll wind up smart and broke. He says, it's okay to be dumb and broke but if a guy's smart and broke, that's pitiful. Bill Bailey says, don't let your learning lead to knowledge. You'll become a fool. Let your learning lead to action. You can get rich. Next, let's go through the law of averages, the law of use. The first one, this law is pretty simple, and it says, whatever you don't use, you lose. That means if you tie your arm to your body, leave it there long enough, you might never be able to use it again. It's over for lack of use. You could lose the use of your arm. The only way to keep the use of your arm is to keep using it. If you quit, you lose. Just remember the key idea here. If you quit, you lose. Now, what's important to understand is the same thing that goes for your arm goes for your brain. That's important to know. Same thing goes for all the human virtues. If you don't use your ambition, 
it can shrink and disappear and it could very well be over. In fact, it might be over before the man dies. Like his arm is now no longer, he can no longer use his arm because he hasn't used it. He may not be dead, but it's over for his arm. Strong feeling unused tends to diminish. Excitement unused tends to diminish. Finally, after a while, there's just hardly anything a little excited about. There are so many years of disuse that now it's pretty well over. So here's what you need to do. Regularly check what you have in terms of talent, creativity, activity, energy, vitality, brain power, thinking ability, acting power, and your skills. Make sure you use all of these every day. Otherwise, you're losing and losing. Here's the second law, the law of averages. Explained in the Bible, here's what the law of averages means. If you repeat something often, if you do something over and over and over, you will get what we call a ratio of results. This ratio is a key aspect to understand about the law of averages. The law of averages works for anyone who wants to give it a try. From all that we've known about sales or the law of averages, that is true. If you knock on enough doors, somebody will buy. Some won't be home. Some may have plenty of what you've got to sell, so they don't really need any. However, if you knock on enough doors, somebody will buy. I mean, this principle works for anyone, regardless of age or financial status. No matter how poor you are, no matter how young you are, a ratio will develop for anybody that's willing to try. Keep on planning. See, that's the key. Get your ratio going. A person gets a good idea, and then they allow every little thing to get in the way. Said, you need to pay attention to these small details. That's called the language of the poor. People have the most remarkable ability to major in minor things. Learn not to do that. Start doing major things first. Let the minor things slide. Don't do all the list of little things and let the major things slide. Turn your life around on that score. Some people let all of their time get eaten up. The third law is the law of sowing and reaping. For most of my life, I didn't pay much attention to the concept of sowing and reaping. I'm just trying to find the money, pay a bill. When would I have time to think about sowing and reaping? Here's a simple principle from the Bible. Whatever a man sows, he reaps. Sounds kind of blunt and simple, but that's the way it's stated. Whatever a man sows, he reaps. The first advice I'm giving you on that is don't try to beat it. You plant pumpkin seeds. You don't get thistles. Mother Nature won't play tricks on you and give you thistles when you're planting pumpkin seeds. You won't do that. But God can pretty well tell how things are going to work out if he plants with intelligence. The 16 hours you are awake, learn how to invest yourself. That's the key. Learn how to invest. You learn how to invest your attitude and handshake and your personality. Learn how to invest your excitement. Learn how to invest your compassion, caring, and learn how to invest your invitation. Learn how to invest your strong feelings. Learn how to invest wisely every 16 hours. See, that's how you get the better harvest coming in. Now, if you aim to achieve wealth, the key word is people. Invest in other people. The master teacher said 2,000 years ago, if a man wishes to be great at anything, let him find a way to become a servant of many people. The wealth lies in people. And helping others is where the real wealth is found. The guy says, well, I can't be responsible for half my community. About the best I can do is take care of myself. Look after myself, work hard, pay my bills, not be a burden on anyone. Take care of myself. It's about the best I can do. That's a poor man thinking. Always will be poor, and their life may not hold much adventure or achievement. Here's where things can either take a positive turn or go downhill. It's your mindset. One guy said, it's not my drinking that's got me stinking. It's my stinking thinking that's got me drinking. This underscores a crucial point. There's an Old Testament phrase. It covers the part of the matter. Here's what it says. As a man thinketh, so is he. The way a person thinks is reflected in their handshake. A man's conversation is a product of the way he thinks. The way a man talks is the way he thinks. He talks like he thinks. That's where he lives. That's what he wears. That's what he earns. That's what he drives. That's the size of his bank account. A man's life is a product of the way he thinks. The quality of their conversations 
is influenced by the information that enters their mind. Whatever flows into his brain, out comes the product. And the fabric of a man's life is built from those ingredients that pour into his mental factory. Therefore, the first step is to learn how to filter out negativity and replace it with positivity. You know, throw out the trash. You cannot build a dynamic, successful, prosperous, happy, achieving life with trash ingredients. Start making a deliberate attempt to talk about the good things. Read the good things, listen to the good things, the challenges, the opportunities, problem solving. Spend as little time as possible on the problems, most of the time on the solutions. Now, I'm not saying that you can get 100% positive and zero negative. That just can't be done. However, the more positive content you introduce, minimizing the negative, the more it begins to reshape the fabric of your economic, social, and personal life. Maintaining a predominantly positive flow can bring about significant changes in your life. Keeping this positive flow is crucial because there are transformative ideas within it that can greatly impact your bank account and future. Now, certain ideas might offer a bit of help, but there are ideas and ingredients so potent that they can transform your life and wealth in multiple ways, make you wealthy in more ways than one. So this is why it's crucial to consistently tap into this positive stream of elements while actively shutting off the negative ones. There are some negative ingredients that will keep you poor. Some will just kind of make you limp financially. Some will just kind of keep you rocking alone. And there are some ingredients in this negative box here that will kill you. They'll kill your desire. For ambition, eat your, your strong feeling, kill your compassion, kill you in a very short period of time. Those ingredients are so powerful, you have got to watch like a hawk what gets poured in here. Shut this off, open this up, and watch it change your life.